Today I want to talk about legendary equipment in Fallout 76. More specifically I want to talk about problems with the current system and suggest ways in which it could be improved. To start off we need to talk about how the legendary system currently works, as there's a few different ways to obtain legendary items. They can be gained as rewards through quests or events, potentially bought from other players, or gained as loot from the body of a legendary enemy that you've killed. Trading with other players to gain the legendaries you want can be the fastest way to go about things. Problem is, you're relying on someone else having done the work of getting the item that you're after. On top of that, you have to find someone willing to sell the item, which often involves a lot of time scouring Discord and Reddit, hoping to come across something you like the look of for a price you can afford. On to quests and events, where there's at least a little more reliability to it all. In fact, certain quests will reward you with unique weapons and armour which you can't get anywhere else, something I'll be going back to later in the video. Other than these, you will often be rewarded with a legendary item upon completion of an event. The exact rate at which you are rewarded with these seems a little random, but in general it appears that higher level events have a higher chance of rewarding you with legendaries at the end of them. Scorched Earth in particular seems to be a guaranteed way to get yourself a legendary, as I've received one each time I've completed that event. The legendaries you receive can have one, two, or three effects on them. Obviously, the more effects the better, but most of the time event reward legendaries only have a single effect. If you want to get a legendary item with the most effects, then your best bet is often hunting legendary enemies. Legendary enemy spawns can happen randomly in the world at any time. You can be walking from one location to the next, and just happen to stumble across an enemy with stars next to their name, indicating what tier of legendary they are. One star enemies have one additional health bar and can drop items with a single legendary effect, two star enemies can drop either a one star or two star legendary, and three star enemies can drop one, two, or three star legendary equipment. Obviously, you want to be trying to find 3-star enemies in order to get the best gear, but encountering them is mostly luck-based. There are a couple of events that will spawn 3-star legendaries, such as the aforementioned Scorched Earth, however just about every method of farming these enemies takes a lot of work and is still largely luck-based, due to the fact a 3-star enemy could still drop a 1 or 2-star legendary item. On top of this, the item and effects you get are also random. Any weapon and almost any armour could drop, and then the effects are chosen from a pool of different base legendary effects for each rank. Out of curiosity, I ran the numbers, and it's kind of insane when you work out each possible variation of what can drop. In fact, it's so insane that I'm adding in a whole section to this video that goes over it all. As I previously stated, legendary gear can spawn with one, two, or three effects. These are known as prefix, major, and minor modifiers respectively. A one-star weapon only has a prefix modifier, a 2-star weapon has a prefix and a major, whilst a 3-star has a prefix, major, and minor modifier. I've split equipment into different categories, and to start off we're going to look at melee and unarmed weapons. In total, there are 44 different melee and unarmed weapons in the game. There have been 19 prefix modifiers, 4 major modifiers, and 6 minor modifiers that could spawn on these items. With some basic maths, we can work out that this means there's a total of 551 different legendary variants that can appear on a melee or an armed weapon. Multiply this by the 44 different melee slash armed weapons currently included in the game, and we have a grand total of 24,244 different legendary melee or an armed drops that can occur when you receive a legendary item. We're going to need that number later on, but now let's move on to ranged weaponry. This time there are 23 prefix modifiers, 7 major modifiers, and 9 minor modifiers. This means we end up with 1,633 different combinations of legendary effects that can show up on any ranged weapon. In total there are 50 ranged weapons, excluding the flare gun which I assume doesn't have any legendary drops, which means we need to multiply 50 by 1,633 to get our total of 81,650 different legendary ranged weapons that can drop. Our final part to look at is armour, which is where the numbers really start to go wild. There are 102 different armour pieces that can spawn with legendary effects on them. We have 18 prefix modifiers, 10 major modifiers, and 12 minor modifiers with armour, leading to a total of 2,358 legendary variations. Apply that to the 102 different pieces these effects can show up on, and you have a grand total of 240,516 different legendary armour variations. See, I told you the numbers were going to get a little crazy! But even then, we're not done. Oh no, not just yet. A freestyle legendary enemy could drop any type of weapon or armour, as their legendary drops, so we have to add all these up. 
24,244 plus 81,650 plus 240,516 gives us the grand total of 346,410 different variations onto what could drop when you kill a 3 star legendary enemy. If you've been wondering why you struggle so much with finding a 2 shot explosive weightless handmade rifle, here's why. If each drop has the same chance of happening, then it's a 1 in 346,410 chance for it to occur. That's less than a 0.000003% chance. This is the problem with the legendary system. There's just way too much randomness to it all. Most of you likely know me from my character builds. I enjoy building characters around specific items, ideas and themes, but this becomes a lot more difficult when I can't get the right equipment for a character, as I'm stuck hoping for a specific drop which almost certainly isn't going to happen. It takes enough time just to get a freestyle legendary enemy to show up, and then you're left entirely to chance with what item you're going to get. Now, I fully understand that the endgame grind is largely a case of trying to get all the equipment you want, but does it really need to be quite so insanely random? There are ways to keep the grind whilst not also forcing me to roll a dice with hundreds of thousands of sides each time. To show some other ways that legendaries could be attained, we're going to take a look at a few different games. Starting off, let's head over to Skyrim. I'm sure plenty of the old crowd are excited to see me featuring Skyrim in a video again. In Skyrim, the equivalent of legendary items would be enchanted items. Excluding uniques, something else we'll touch on later, there are a few ways to gain enchanted items. They can be a reward from a quest, bought from vendors, found randomly in the world, or crafted. The first three of these function similar to Fallout 76, however being able to enchant gear yourself is the big turning point that makes it so any character in Skyrim can get the gear they want. Instead of having the grind be going out and trying to kill legendary enemies, the grind for Skyrim gear was often trying to level up enchanting to the max, and then choosing what effects to put on items. You could learn various enchantments by breaking down pre-enchanted items with the effect you wanted to learn, meaning you still needed to acquire the initial pieces of gear, but weren't constantly on the hunt for them. This meant there was still a bit of a random element to it all, but the player had a lot more control over what their equipment would end up being. Because of this, players were able to focus themselves to a certain playstyle or character, without having to worry about the fact they might not get the specific random drops they needed. I feel this crafting system could be somewhat applied to Fallout 76. Let's say you're able to scrap down legendaries, and then you learn the legendary effect for that particular rank and weapon. For example, if I scrapped this instigating gorse rifle, I would learn the instigating effect for gorse rifles, which I could then craft and apply to any gorse rifle I pick up in the prefix modifier slot for that weapon. If I had a 2 star legendary gorse rifle, I could scrap it, then I'd learn whichever major modifier it had, and likewise a 3 star gorse rifle being scrapped would learn the minor modifier. By having each of these legendary effects limited to the specific weapon they were learnt from, it would still ensure people are farming for legendaries, but would lower the disappointment from not getting the exact drop you wanted. It would also make 1 and 2 star legendaries still worthwhile picking up in the late game, as they could yield powerful legendary effects for you to be able to craft or mod onto your own gear later. This would also have a side effect of helping out with carry weight. Selling legendaries to vendors isn't all that worthwhile, so I often lug a fair few around to sell to other players when I get the chance. This eats up rum in either my stash or inventory though, whereas if I could scrap them to learn legendary effects, I wouldn't be so inclined to keep them around for so long. Maybe Skyrim isn't the best example though. It's a single player game, and what works in that might not fit as well in a multiplayer setting, where Bethesda wants players to be spending a lot of time and teaming up with others for rewards. Instead, let's move on to Destiny 2. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm a D2 expert. I've only got into the game fairly recently, and the original Destiny was a game I only very casually played. That said, it hasn't taken me long to draw inspiration from the game. So in Destiny 2, you gain legendary gear from engrams. These engrams can be earned from certain NPCs, who all essentially function as faction quest givers and merchants. Complete tasks or actions related to these factions, and you gain materials that you can turn into these NPCs in order to increase faction reputation. Earn enough faction reputation and you get an engram which turns into loot, such as legendary equipment. That's my simplified version of the somewhat complicated system D2 has in place, but I hope it makes sense. How I feel this could translate into Fallout 76 is with our own faction based system. We already have the Enclave, Brotherhood, Free States and so on, so the various factions are in the game already. 
Additionally, we already have faction-based events that we can complete for rewards, so it wouldn't be much to add a faction-based currency into those reward pools. Complete enough faction events and earn the correct currency, and you can trade it in for a legendary. Ideally, a faction-based legendary. As an example, let's say you complete drop connection a few times and earn enough to purchase a legendary item. You head to Modus and he gives a few different options for different prices. Some urban armour or plasma rifles with basic legendary effects could be potential rewards, but maybe there's also a couple of uniques you could get too. Perhaps a gorse rifle that does double damage if you have no mutations and no rads. Unique faction rewards will get people playing events more often and help with the current randomness of the legendary system. We only have a few uniques in game right now, and they're not anything to write home about. Perfect Storm and All Rise are both decent unique weapons, but I replaced them quickly with better random legendary drops I found. I'd like to see a decent number of good quality unique legendary weapons and armor pieces become available to us, and having faction related legendaries could help to do this, as the devs could build them around the theme of the faction itself. Maybe the free states have armor that gives a boost boss in marshy terrain and perhaps the Brotherhood could get a piece of legendary power armour. These items don't need to be the greatest bits of gear out there. In fact, keeping balance with the legendaries is something I'd like to see more of, but there's still plenty of room for unique legendaries with a set purpose to them. There's examples from two different games for how to adapt and improve the legendary acquisition system currently in place in Fallout 76. I've got one more game I want to draw inspiration from though, and that is Borderlands 2. Technically, there are a few different ways to get legendaries in this game. They could be in chests, a couple of quest rewards, and there's even one legendary that is a completely random drop that could appear after killing any enemy you run across. The main way to get legendaries, however, is to defeat bosses. Each boss in the game has a chance of dropping a legendary item, and these items are dropped by specific bosses. For instance, if I want to get myself a sham shield, then I would farm the BNK3R, as this is the boss who has the sham in its loot pool. When the shield does drop, it also can come in a few different variants depending on the parts it contains. These aren't listed on the shield itself, but show through the visual and the effects. For example, a sham shield with all dowel parts has a 76% chance to absorb incoming bullets, whereas a sham shield with a mix of Mollywon and Hyperion pieces can have as high as a 94% chance to absorb enemy bullets. This is a very quick explanation of the legendary system in Borderlands 2, as the basic information we're focusing on is that this all promotes farming of certain bosses. You know which boss you want to head to in order to get the item you're after, and then you keep killing it in order to try and get whatever it is you want. Once you get the item you're after, it also might not be exactly what you want, so you end up going back to farm them even more to get the perfect variant. When explained like this, it does sound a little boring and grindy, and to be fair, it often could be. Despite that, it was a grind where you knew what to do. If you want this item, kill this boss. You might have to do it 100 times, but if players have a certain place where they will get the item, plenty of them are willing to do so. Just look at my video talking about the Hunter's Long Coat as an example. That video was me explaining that there was a really slim chance of a vendor bot showing up in a certain location, and if it does, it might sell the coat. I explained that the process was long and boring and recommended most people don't bother with it. But despite that, I received a ludicrous number of comments from people who were farming for the vendor. Because we all had a place to go to get the item, we flocked there. It didn't matter that it was purely cosmetic, rather expensive, and had a slim chance of occurring, we all still decided it was worth a shot. Even when the odds are against us, we're willing to put the time and effort in if we know what it is we'll get at the end. The problem with legendaries in Fallout 76 is that we have no idea what we'll get each time we kill a legendary enemy. There are 346,410 different drops that could take place from killing a 3-star enemy, because literally anything could drop from it. What I would propose here is something to somewhat mirror what Borderlands 2 does, but with a bit of a twist. Treat legendary enemies the same way Borderlands 2 treats bosses. Give each variant a set loot pool, so we have some idea of what we're going to get. Let me give a few examples. Currently, if I come across a freestyle ghoul, it could drop anything. But what if its loot pool was limited to only dropping legendary combat armour? Well, if I was after a full suit of combat armour, then I'd be hunting legendary ghouls as much as possible. Likewise, you can make Yaogwai drop legendary hunting rifles. You want to be the best hunter out there? You've got to be able to take down a Yaogwai. 
One item type for each monster doesn't work. We'd have 33 different enemies for about 105 item categories, so instead we'd have to mostly go for 3 different drops for each creature. These are numbers I put together without separating creatures into their variants and whilst grouping armor sets, so there's a fair bit of wiggle room here, but it could still work easily enough. In fact, it would incentivize more so hunting down more rare or dangerous creatures. Right now, I know a legendary Deathclaw could drop the exact same stuff as a legendary Radstag, but only one of those creatures is going to try and tear my head off. Why fight the Deathclaw when you can go after the Radstag? Well, with the new system I suggest you can make weaker creatures drop legendary variants of more basic equipment, and tougher creatures drop more high-end legendary gear. For example, the legendary Radstag might drop legendary pieces of leather armor and spears, whereas the legendary Deathclaw could have legendary assault rifles, miniguns, and, of course, Deathclaw gauntlets. In my eyes, this is a system that makes a lot more sense than the current one in place, and will make legendary hunting and farming a more enjoyable process. If I want myself one of the best legendary weapons out there, then I've got to be willing to face against some of the toughest creatures the Wastes have. So there we have a trio of different games with their own legendary item systems, which could be adapted into Fallout 76. I'm not saying they're perfect, or even that they'd work all that well, but I feel they'd be better than what we have right now. Personally, I'd love to see all three methods implemented, but I doubt that's going to be the case. I'm not on the dev team for 76, so I can't push forward these changes in a staff meeting. Instead, I have to make a video talking about it, and hoping that the community as a whole or someone in the dev team agrees with what I have to say and pushes for change. On the off chance any of the dev team are watching, and are thinking to themselves, those changes won't work in the game and will take too much time to implement, then fair enough. I don't know how tricky it would be to change these things. At the very least though, can you please make it so that freestyle legendary enemies only drop freestyle legendary items? I get so damn annoyed killing a 3 star and then getting 1 star loot, it feels like I got cheated out of the good stuff. Anyway, that's it for my ideas on how to improve the legendary system in Fallout 76. If you have any suggestions of your own on how the system could be changed, then feel free to leave it in a comment. Any suggestions I really think are decent ideas, I'll give a heart to. I'd also really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video. This one took a lot of work. The script alone has taken several days, so I dread to think how long I spend editing. Most importantly of all though, share this video. If you think there's some good ideas in here, then let others know about them. Even if you don't click the share button, head over to the Fallout Reddit or Discord, and discuss with others in the community how the legendary system could be improved. If we get a conversation going about this, then it could be changed for the better. As always, I want to thank you very much for watching. Sarge out.